I will admit that I have actually, in desperation, rummaged around my house looking for the glasses on my face. <laughs> I have crawled around on my hands and knees in the front and back seat of my car, under my desk, under counters in the kitchen, under cushions in the sofa, desperately seeking the car keys that were in my pocket. <laughs> I have indeed, more than once, I just admitted that, didn't I? More than once, searched frantically among all the files in my computer for the sermon document that was open in another tab. <laughs> And I have generally, on many enough of an occasion, completely missed the elephant in the room. I have failed to pay attention, well, pretty much every day. Because it's part of being human. There's a psychological set of theories called attention theory. How we miss things that are right in front of our face. There's different ideas about why this happens. First was broadbent selective attention theory, that all the sensory information we take in goes in quickly, <coughs> is immediately stored, and then filtered or selected. So if you hear all the noise at a party but need to listen to the person talking to you, your brain filters out the stuff you don't need to hear and tries to focus your attention on the person's voice you're trying to listen to. There's a few problems with this idea. If meaning has not yet been assigned to anything when you filter it, how do you know you're focusing in on the language or the color of a person's shirt? <coughs> so then the next theory developed was that the brain filters things first and then it selects which of the filtered things it needs to pay attention to. And then the theory came to be that this happens kind of both at the same time. That we filter information as we process it. So the processing and filtering happen in this kind of juggling act of balance. Who knows? Yet, why we can miss things right in front of our face, even when we're trying to pay attention. You've heard of the famous experiment where a bunch of people were asked to closely observe people passing around a basketball and count how many times it was passed, and three quarters of them totally missed the woman walking through them with an umbrella. <laughs> and when asked what color the umbrella was when the woman walked through, they're like, what woman? Right? And this has many different variations. People are asked to pay attention to something, a gorilla dances around them, and like <laughs> they're asked, you know, what color hat the gorilla was wearing or whatever, and they're like, what gorilla? <laughs> we seriously overestimate our ability to multitask as human beings. We need to selectively turn our attention in one way or another to the thing we want to focus on. And we miss things. And in a sense, it's an evolutionary necessity. If we can't process and filter out that the grass isn't dangerous, but that lion is, we're not going to be around very long, right? So we have evolved to kind of focus our attention selectively based on need and desire. If we want to, say, grow a congregation, we need to focus our attention on some things. In fact, we need to kind of focus it on many things in our congregational life. Because we do not have a, do a dogma or a creed, we need to make sure that we do have a mission and a message. And we need to stay focused on our purpose. If we don't, when people come in, they'll stick around a little while and they'll drift off. And we'll be asked, Remember those two visitors with the plaid shirts? We're like, what visitors with the plaid shirts? How often does this happen in our congregations, right? 
We need to pay continuing selective attention to the things in our congregation that will grow us, bind us together, focus us more clearly on what we say is the important thing, the mission that we do. It is time, in a sense, for all of us in our respective congregations, maybe even together, to focus our attention a little more closely on who we're talking to, who's coming in our doors, and whether or not they're sticking around. Because then, we will have a full church like this. We can do this. It is not all that difficult. Human beings have forever been able to not pay attention to certain things. Sometimes it means we miss a visitor in a plaid shirt. But sometimes it ends up meaning that other people are abused, hurt, or killed because we're not paying attention. Why is this? Why is our world still full of so much injustice? Why so much racism? Why so much genocide and imperialism? Why so much intolerance, hate, and violence towards those who are different? Yes, we are asked to care about an awful lot. There is compassion fatigue. There is justice fatigue. We can only pay attention and only act on so many things at once. It seems like everything in the world needs our attention to make this world a better place. And we can only focus on and do so much. We are trying now, finally, many of us, in many places, in many ways, to pay more attention. To pay attention to people who have been left out, ignored, forgotten, eliminated. We are trying, in our own tradition, to dismantle racism and white supremacy. White UUs have missed so much for so long, it's going to be a process. And we're going to need to be reminded to selectively return our attention to this task. But we need to remember that if we, as white people in our tradition, miss the umbrella and the gorilla, other people are being really hurt. And that's not to make us feel guilty. It's to call our attention to being a little bit more focused. We live in a culture where attention is increasingly manipulated and self-selected to reinforce things we already know and we're already comfortable with. We have an impeachment process in progress. And it's almost as if we're fighting not over whether there's an impeachable offense but whether things happened or didn't even happen. Truth gets manipulated. One side sees this, another side sees that. And reality all of a sudden disappears due to different modes of selective attention. How do you break through to someone who's missing the gorilla dancing around in front of them? Even those of us who care and who know it's wrong who understand now the history and myths of American civic religion are indeed myths and not accurate accounts of what really happened between the colonizers and the colonized. Even those of us who get this, who are a little bit awake, who have our attention on our work and our families and our health and our friends and driving the car and the road in front of us. Even those of us who get it and we're trying to pay attention we still can't seem to get Columbus Day eliminated, right? For still some reason this is a holiday and the pilgrims are somehow, they had their pluses and minuses, but somehow they are still deified as like the Abraham of our national myth, the progenitors of generations and generations, right? And we do not demand reparations for the people who suffered genocide. Even thus, 
Even those of us who know and care, it's wrong to understand that people are killed in our country for the color of their skin and their gender expression. Even though we proudly go through educational programs about welcoming and including people to be a welcoming congregation. Even though we march in pride parades and will shortly pray a litany of names of the murdered, even us, we may have only barely noticed this stuff at all if our attention weren't refocused on it. It is not because we are bad. It is because we are human. It is not because we are indifferent or uncaring. It is because we are human. We do care. But paying attention to every single injustice that crosses our eyes and flies by our ears is impossible. We are neurologically not evolutionary wired to pay attention to everything. And so, we have to stop and remind ourselves to focus our attention. And we need others to help us do this. We need to all help each other focus, because individually, we will just naturally miss a lot of stuff. We can only focus on so much at once. Some of us must focus on black lives. Some of us must focus on saving the earth. Some of us must focus on transphobia to call each other's attention to those things. We can all help out in our own way, in our bit, right? Creating the world we dream about <clears throat> does indeed take all of us because none of us can pay enough attention to every injustice. We need each other, not just to help us pay attention, but to do the work we realize is necessary once our attention is called to the injustice. We can't do everything. I cannot be part of the Green Sanctuary team and the Religious Education team and the Black Lives Matter team and the Sanctuary Church team. I mean, if we were to get each of us involved in everything, we'd barely have time to eat or drink cornbread and cider. Right? We need each other. We need to divide and conquer. We need to divide into teams that operate out of the same values. We need to lend a hand to each other when called upon. Some of us must focus here. Some of us must focus here. Some of us must focus here. And that way we can accomplish it all. So when we are urged, begged, and pleaded with to pay attention to the injustice, Remember, we can shift our attention, open our filter wider to include more information that gets processed, and thus include more people and more things, such as our planet, as important and deserving our attention and our help. One of the worst symptoms of privilege is that it relieves you from being forced to pay attention. Privilege creates immunity. Privilege allows the wealthy to ignore the suffering, hunger, illness, anxiety, and homelessness the poor are forced to pay attention to. Privilege allows men to ignore the sexism, abuse, and violence women are forced to pay attention to. Privilege allows a white person to ignore the lives of black people and the genocide of native and indigenous peoples and the daily indignities they are forced to pay attention to. Privilege allows the heterosexual to ignore the discrimination, inequality, and homophobia the gay, lesbian, and bisexual person are forced to pay attention to. Privilege allows the cisgendered person to ignore the discrimination and transphobia and fear and abuse and death that the transgender person is forced to pay attention to. Privilege allows us to ignore so much that privilege can allow us to be apolitical. In fact, being non-political is the very epitome of privilege. For only one who is not forced to pay attention to the elements of daily living that are unjust that are affected by politics and political decisions can afford to ignore them. 
And worst of all, privilege makes it easier to dehumanize others. Others who are forced to pay attention to things in ways we are not. And dehumanization is a prerequisite, a requirement, a necessity in order for abuse and violence and murder to happen. For when we dehumanize, we make someone not human like us, we make them something less than human, not like us. And when things are not like us, it's easier to treat them not like us. Instead of human, we make them a bum, a tramp, a garbage picker. We make them a whore, a bitch, a slut. We make them a redskin, an engine, a sports team mascot. We make them a dyke, a fairy, a tranny, a faggot. Labels aren't just labels. They are the ways we put other people into categories which mean not as human as me. And when we dehumanize, we can hurt, we can maim, we can kill. And being Unitarian Universalists, as we live into this faith, this faith has to help us do something very important. It helps us pay attention. It calls our attention, it calls us to honor the dignity and worth of all people. All people, all human beings. There is no such thing as a lesser person. This is our first principle, our prime directive our most lofty ideal and spiritual value. There is no such thing as a lesser person. We may not ignore this. Violating this most sacred belief, always and without exception, leads to violence and death and drags us further and further from the spirit of life we so affirm.